Hello everybody, this is Mr. Lawback. In this video lecture, I'm going to go over the presidency of Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford served as the U.S. president from 1974 until 1977. We will conclude by taking a look at Ford's failed election against Jimmy Carter, the Democrat, and we'll also check out some big takeaways from the Ford administration. Gerald Ford became president after one of the most devastating political crises in American history. Ford was a popular and respected legislator who had served as the Republican minority leader in the House of Reps. He had never expected to become president, and he remains the only person to fill the offices of vice president and president without actually being elected to either of those offices. You'll remember that Spiro Agnew, the vice president for Richard Nixon, resigned, and Nixon appointed Ford to the vice presidency. Ford lost much of the goodwill that he had initially enjoyed on September 8, 1974, when he pardoned Richard Nixon for any crimes that he might have committed as president. Ford believed that a long trial of the former president would needlessly prolong the national trauma of the Watergate scandal. At the time, many people disagreed with this decision. Ford was widely criticized, and Democrats won congressional majorities in the 1974 elections. In later years, opinions changed and Ford's pardon was regarded by even some of its critics as a wise and courageous move. But for the midterm elections of 1974, it was too late and the Democrats took control of Congress. In some respects, Ford carried on the foreign policy of the Nixon administration, and he retained Henry Kissinger in office as Secretary of State. Ford visited China, and he was the first U.S. president to visit Japan. But the economy dominated Ford's presidency. The American economy continued to sputter. It suffered problems that rarely went together, inflation and unemployment. This economic situation of the 1970s became known as stagflation, where inflation and unemployment were combined. Stagflation had at least two deep-rooted causes. First, President Johnson attempted to pay for both the Vietnam War and the Great Society without raising taxes, thus creating strong inflationary pressures. Second, the U.S. economy had become dangerously dependent upon inexpensive imported oil. The OPEC price increase played a significant role in driving up the costs of everything from gasoline to groceries in the 1970s, contributing to this inflation. Ford attempted to combat these economic problems with traditional conservative remedies of tax cuts and reduced government spending. Despite this, inflation continued and unemployment rose to 10%. Ford's initiative to raise morale and boost confidence in the economy by encouraging people to wear WIN, W-I-N, standing for Whip Inflation Now, buttons was a dismal failure. Ford contended with other problems as well. Ford, a physically fit man who had been a star athlete in college, a football player at the University of Michigan, tripped in public a few times, and he was soon portrayed by comedians as a klutz. Determined to seek election to the presidency in his own right, Ford fended off a determined challenge to the Republican nomination for presidency to Ronald Reagan for the 1976 election. Reagan was the former governor of California and, of course, would become president after winning the 1980 election. The Democrats nominated Jimmy Carter, who had served a term as the governor of Georgia. Carter stressed that he was an outsider to Washington, and he appealed to the post-Watergate mood of the electorate by promising, I will never lie to you. Ford heard himself in a televised debate by inexplicably seeming to assert that Eastern Europe was not controlled by the Soviet Union, when obviously it clearly was. In the end, Carter won a narrow electoral victory by appealing to traditional Democratic constituencies and winning back the Southern Democrats who had supported Richard Nixon in the 1968 and 1972 elections. The self-proclaimed D.C. outsider won the presidency from Gerald Ford in 1976. A couple of big takeaways from Gerald Ford's presidency. What really hurt him was the beginning of his presidency where he pardoned Richard Nixon. In hindsight, many agreed that, that was probably a pretty good idea, but at the time, he caught a lot of flack from the public for it. Ford faced huge economic problems as president. During his presidency, America suffered from both inflation and unemployment, again called stagflation. When Ford tried to run for re-election, Jimmy Carter and many politicians of the post-Watergate era emerged victorious by campaigning as outsiders. All right, everybody, I hope this information helps you better understand the presidency of Gerald Ford. Have a great rest of the day.